David Edward and Jody Sperling discuss the process of getting a literary agent. Jody, how are you? Good. How are you, David? I'm good. Thanks for taking the time to uh, be on my podcast. I'm so excited. Yeah, no, it's, it's good to have you. Now, now you and I have talked and, and you're in a bit of a unique situation because you actually do your own podcast um, on yeah. in, in this issue. What is that about? Just to give you a little plug here. Um, yeah, well, thank you. Sure. Um, so create, collaborate, and I, I wanted to make it really hard on myself. So it's C-R-E and then the number eight and collaborate <laughs> is the same way I replaced the A-T-E I with the number it. eight. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just wanted people to really have a hard time finding it, but um, <laughs> It really, I, I wanted a place for other fiction writers to find uh, support in marketing and publishing their book so that they can actually make money doing it because it's not a bad word to make money and uh, on your writing. So that's yeah. what that's what we talked about. Yeah. One, one day I'll have that experience. I, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. And, we, and we talked, you know, we're kind of complimenting, right? Because my, my, my stuff is kind of focused on the process of writing and, and getting mm-hmm. the book done. And then you talk about once you have a book, what do you, what do you do with it? How do you make it successful? Yeah. How do you market it? And that kind of stuff. So, Absolutely. Um, and, and your podcast is on every podcast platform that exists, I believe. Right. Yes, sir. You can find it on Spotify, Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, anywhere you listen. We'll put, we'll put some links down to it. Um, awesome. So Jody, while you're not being a uh, world famous podcaster, I understand <laughs> in your spare time, you've actually written a book of your own. Yeah. Yeah. So my novel is The Nine Lives of Marva DeLonghi, uh, mm-hmm. and it is a, a mystery kind of in the noir vein. So I really got the the voice of Humphrey Bogart in my head when I started to write that book. And I tried just every day to pump that sound into my brain to, to write that book. That's awesome. And unlike slubs like me who don't like to even wait for their coffee to heat up and hit, hit the self-publish button, you actually went through um, a fairly uh, rigorous process and you have an agent and yes. the agent um, gave you notes on the book. Uh, yeah. And, and you're now in the process of, uh, are you in the process of shopping it now? Is that right? I, 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 yeah. And yeah. it has been, it's been a long process, David. Um, I, I do want to say there's nothing schlubby about what you did. And <laughs> I think that there are days where I wish that I had uh, gone down the road that you did because I think that a, a lot of my decision to go after a literary agent was ego driven. I, I hate to say that, but I just want to be real about it is that I actually am enamored with the gatekeepers. Uh, I want them to say, Hey son, you're good enough. You know, <laughs> so that's, that's a big part of the reason that I, I did it. And that's why I don't think that you're schlubby at all. I think that you understand that, that readers uh, deserve just honest, good, suspenseful, thrilling I, prose. I appreciate it. Well, you write literature. I write what they call slock um, or pulp. <laughs> oh, boy. It, it's pulp. It, it's, uh, but you know what? It's uh, you know new book every uh, two or three months. And um, and, and I'm, I've developed the following as we've talked. Yeah. But um, so walk us through, because even I don't know. I, and, and you and I, we've talked a couple of times before. And, uh, you know, for my first book, which probably wasn't the right one to do it on, I, I tried that process. And I think I told mm. you after nine months, I got an email back that they acknowledged that they had received my email. I'm like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. So done. So, right. so, so walk us through, you know, so I usually ask people, what did you do to get your book from out here to here? Which, and we'll talk about mm-hmm. that, but yeah. you know, you, 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 you typed the end, you sat mm-hmm. down, you drank your coffee. What happened mm-hmm. between then and you actually getting an agent? How, how did you do it? Tell us how you did it. Okay. So there's, there's a couple things that I would do different. And that when I am talking with people who are actively looking for agents is a little bit different. So I'm going to intermingle both of those things because what I did worked eventually. What I did was different than uh, what I would tell people to do. And what I would tell people to do is go through social media, use Twitter, use Facebook, use those places to help you connect with agents. Almost all of them are there. And honestly, my best advice is use Twitter. Twitter is where all of the agents are. It's where all of the publishers Mm -hmm. are. They all have a presence there and you can interact with them either on their wall or you can even direct message them. I would never suggest direct messaging them. (laughs) It's just possible. That's the level of access you have and you don't get it anywhere else on the internet. You get this unbridled access. And what you can do actually is you go into their Twitter profile and you look at the people who are, who they are following, not who's following them, but who they are following, because those are the people that admire 
uh, that they admire. The agents admire those people. They like those people. And if you can make connections with them through just kind, thoughtful interaction, you can build a connection to the agent. And then when your submission falls on that agent's desk, it's a whole different ballgame. They recognize your name and name recognition cannot be, you know, under, under sold understated, at all. Yeah, yeah. Understated. Thank you. Yeah. So that's probably the, the cornerstone of what I would do. If, if you set down your metaphorical pen today and you want to start looking for an agent before you go to agentquery.com, I would start looking for agents just generally with hashtags and get familiar with the landscape because they will tell you in a, in a very small bio what kind of work they're looking for and who they work for and how they work. And you just get more access in Twitter in 20 minutes than you do from agentquery.com in five hours. Wow. Or nine months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Well, well so, so that's your advice, but, but how did you do it? How did you do it? So I did go through agentquery.com. Uh, and, and so that's, that's the second step. And it works for everybody. If you understand how to work that system, you have to be patient, you have to be thoughtful, and you have to not just get desperate. What I see so many people do, and what I didn't do is query every agent from A to Z, Right. go through their names are there. And it's awesome. It's a database that you have access to, and you want to select a, a, a specific agent and see from their profile, are they looking to read your kind of fiction? If they are, don't just go to their email address, actually go to their website, look at them, see if you can figure some things out. And I did all of this stuff. This is the stuff that I did. And I, it's funny because I found my agent in the second try. I just didn't know it for quite a while after that because I'd sent so many queries in between uh, when she responded and she was very fast. Annie was very fast uh, getting back to me for the industry. Um, and I was over the moon, but yeah, you yeah. respect who they are and you got to pay attention to them. And agentquery.com makes it really easy to do the research. It's on you to do it right. So what was, what was that correspondence like? So you say, so, so one of the things, I mean, and I've read, you know, I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm creating these videos. I'm glad we're having this conversation because I've, I've yeah. read and watched all the information. And one of the things I figured out was don't send multiple queries to, to people in the same agency because that's that is then they, that it's done it's over yeah um but so so you know so you sent the the query i mean so what did you do did you put a book proposal together and send it to her and i mean how, just you know what what was yeah, that no, that's, what was that process that's a great question so the the query letter itself is a lot more straightforward and not as complex as people want to make it so again let me let me say what you should do and what will get you the best results is actually lead with the hook of of your brand. Lead with the hook of your brand instead of the hook of your book. People think you got to tell the agent and they're going to get interested in your book because you give them a killer hook. Like, you know, John Stigma goes running into a fire to save a baby. And, you know, and then they're like, oh, I've got to read this. Right. It's actually, I have a, a platform of engaged followers, yeah. yada, yada, yada. That's mm -hmm. what really hooks them. They see that they know that we all want to make money and sell stuff. That's the funny thing is we pretend we don't, but we do. And then go into with the query letter talking about this is my book and you do have to spend blood, sweat, and tears to get it boiled down to its essential self, what the book is about in three sentences. And I tell anybody who's going to get the agent, if you can't boil it down to three sentences, you don't know what your book is about. Don't waste your time querying. Why waste your time before you're ready? So that is a huge piece of this process. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's wildly interesting. I, I, I tell people, and, and a lot of the folks I talk to here are um, newer authors, not all of them. I've talked to many, yeah. um, much more successful than myself, but for the new ones, I, I, I ask them when you, you know, what's your book about, but then I ask them, well, what, what's, what was your authority to write it and, and trying to get them to tell me, well, what's your brand as a writer? Um, yeah. which is kind of what you just explained. So you're saying when you go to mm -hmm. an agent, they're, they're as interested in your brand as a writer, mm -hmm. um, and how that's interesting. And then that leads to, well, what stories are you telling? I guess it's kind of what yeah. I heard. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So how long did it take? I mean, I mean, how you sent, you sent the letter in, how did you know they even received it? How did you know to wait? You know, what, what was that? That's a great question. I would say the majority of literary agents do not send you any kind of, we received your query kind yeah. of a notice. Um, and, and the shtick is, and it's probably kind of true, although, you never know. They say that they're so busy. They just can't afford to possibly respond. And I'm like, Hey, we've all used VAs before. They're pretty cheap. And uh, it makes me feel like a human being when somebody responds, but yeah. neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, I, I waited. Uh, yeah. It's the industry. Yeah. I, I waited. 
just waited uh, okay. to, to hear back from people. And like I said, uh, Annie was, was quite quick compared to uh, the horror stories I've heard. So I think uh, she got back to me in three weeks. Okay. And then um, she got back to you and she said, Jody, this is the single greatest piece of literature <laughs> that I've ever read. I want yep. you to make no changes on it. <laughs> Send me a locked PDF and right. I'm, I'm your, I'm your person. I'm going to go, I'm going to go sell this thing. That's exactly what happened. It was amazing. And uh, now I've sold 7 million copies in three days. So <laughs> um, ah, you have the yeah. same sense of reality that I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's yeah, it's really, really something. I am also more uh, emotionally sensitive than a lot of people I know. And I know this about myself too. So she got my book and she did hype me up a lot. We had our phone call that like the, the most amazing phone call. So first it's the first three chapters. I like this. send me a full manuscript. Then I like this. I'd like to work with you sign the contract, then wait to, wait to hear back from me. And then she sends the edits. This is what we need to do with the manuscript. And you look, in this case, the marginalia of the Word document. She just used uh, the Word document to make mm -hmm. all of her edits. And you look at that bewildered, like, wait a sec. I thought you were representing me, not um, telling me I'm a terrible writer. Because there's almost zero pages on the manuscript that don't have some kind of note, do this, do that, change this, this is weak, move this, cut this. These two characters are too similar. You got to merge them. Wow. Uh, the list was exhausting. And the first time I saw it, I did argue her on a couple of points. And she's like, <laughs> I work for you, but I don't work for you if you're going to be this way. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> so right, right, right. You back up pretty quick and realize <laughs> this is the process I signed on for. Wow. Okay. That, that's fascinating. So, so you went through that, that revision pro now was she, was she the one giving you notes or did she have an editor? Do you know? You know what? She is the one who's, who's giving notes. Um, Annie okay. is still a boutique agency. Um, she represents a handful of, of award-winning authors, one who did really great. Um, and won the, the Barnes and Noble, uh, new author award. I can't remember the exact name. So I'm feeling a little bit like a dunce, but yeah. that was pretty big. So she's had some successful uh, clients and I know that she's still in the growing phase, which helped me a little bit, but yeah, she's doing all of the correspondence and editing herself. So she's putting a lot. I mean, she said so for her to pick you as a client, oh. she's really investing in you deeply. Yeah. yeah. And I feel guilty all the time. I'm not going to lie. I do uh, for as long as we've been shopping this book, I want her to make money to be right. honest. Like right. I, right. I want right. that for her. She's a good honest, hardworking person yeah. who probably has worked harder for me than I deserve. Okay. And so, and so that's where you are right now, right? She is currently yep. shopping the book. That, that is, that is really fascinating. Now yeah. um, let's go back to the, the writing process. So, you know, one day um, you, you created your, you know, your, your dash eight uh, um, podcasts and all that. And you said, you know what, mm -hmm. screw this. I'm going to write a book too. You know, what, what was that morning like where you woke up and you hadn't you hadn't written the book and you said today's the day today's the day cracking open my laptop or my whatever and i'm going to start the process of writing this thing what 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 spurred that event so i do want i'm going to attack this question from the i had written really crappy novels before this one um and one okay. that i still believe is a good novel that i just um it was too big to really do anything with so uh, as, as far as your question goes for this novel, I literally did think to myself, I need to change the way that I think about writing because I've been doing this sort of literary pie in the sky, which I still love. I really do enjoy uh, that element of just trying to stretch the form as much as I can. I'm nerdy that way. But this one, I, I thought I want to write something that people really are desperate to read that it's, it's a mystery. It's thrilling. It's bloody. And, you know, there's guns and knives and and, and that was what I went for. And that's what I thought about when I wrote it was let's make this every page. You're like, I got to read the next one. That was my yeah. goal. So, so, but, but what is, I mean, so did you start, did you create a writing space? Did you outline it? You. you know, um, that kind of stuff. I'm what they call a panster. Yeah, and I hate that term, so, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, I hate it too. I want I want them to call it a flyer if you want to start working on that because if you're going to fly by the seat of your pants, at least it makes us sound like we're doing something cool. A fly. Yeah. Flyer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, flyer. So, Done. Yeah, Done. Yeah. Done. Cool. <laughs> so it, I, I do. And so I write, I write word one on a word document. What I have done, if you're talking about just real nitty gritty, I literally remove all of the uh, restrictions on Microsoft word that tells me like you misspelled this word, your grammar could be better. Anything that does any formatting to my book is gone. I basically am working in just uh, rich text. Like I, I want mm -hmm. it to be as straightforward as possible so that the editor on the screen isn't already doing what my brain is doing at, at uh, nuclear speed. So 
uh, and then I write and, and every day I get down as many words as I can. And the next day I read what I wrote the day before mm-hmm. do minor editing, just to make sure structures there and move on. And I, I try my hardest not to deal with the minutia until the first draft is done. Interesting. So did you set like a word count goal for yourself? And, and, and did you know how, about how many words your, your, the book was going to be? Did, did you shoot, did you have a target you were shooting for, or were you just waiting until the story was done? Okay. So let's, let's the, the word count per day. No, I do timed writing. Um, okay. because for me, I find that a word count, uh, can take vastly different amounts of time. You have this ability that I really envy and that you can just sit down and pump a book out. I can't for whatever reason yet I'm working on that. It's that's, something that I admire, but it's cause your books are good. Yeah. No, no, yours are great. <laughs> um, and so I, I, give myself a timed writing. And that is about an hour and a half. If I can write okay. longer than that, I do, but otherwise it's 90 minutes and it's actually set on my clock. And that just helps me to know nothing else needs to happen right now. As soon as the alarm goes off, the rest of the day can attack me, but this alarm tells me it's you and, and the page. So interesting. Yeah. Um, I said, as we've talked, I said a word count. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then, uh, and, and I know, so how do you know how many words your book needs to be and how do you balance that since you're, you're a flyer, um, yeah. how do you balance that from a story standpoint? And I'm the same way. So I'm curious what mm-hmm. you're going to say. I'll tell you what I do, but, but just how do you, how do you balance those two things? Yeah. So I do, you know what, you know, what's funny and, and I'll relate it this way because I think that a lot of people probably have had this experience. You've got a really important meeting tomorrow and you've got to be up early. You've got to be up at 5. AM and you usually don't wake up at five. And so you set like five alarms to make sure that you're out of bed at five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what ends up actually happening is your body wakes you up. Yep. At yep. five o'clock magically before the first alarm goes uh-huh. off. It's this strange inborn thing that we have. And that's how I deal with it is I did a lot of research on what my genre expected for a word count. And I said, I want to write a 72,000 word novel. Lo and behold, when I was finished, it was 74,000 words. And, you know, yeah, I'm going to cut. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once with the editor, I'm sure, you know, they're, they're not usually additive. They're usually subtractive. Mm-hmm. Right. So that'll, exactly. That'll, that'll down. Interesting. Okay. Well, so, and, um, uh, did you get stuck at all? Or, I mean, did you, did you want to have it done by April and you know, oh. that, that kind of stuff? I try to be forgiving of myself with deadlines. I'm working on a sequel to that book right now and I'm doing my third rewrite and I'm really like actively today discovered I need to cut 200 pages. We just took a bad turn and I get where the story's going, wow. but yeah, I, I did the wrong thing. And so I did that with this book as well. I started out the, the main character became the supporting character. Um, the plot was originally just wildly stupid, to be honest. It was about like this lice that caused the pandemic and um, it now it's, it has nothing to do with that. It's a completely different book, but the characters, I discovered them and found out like, how do they behave in tense situations? And then when the plot came to me, it was like, yeah, uh, nitro. Yeah. Now, did you know the end before you started? Nope. Really? <laughs> That's okay. Okay. So our, our styles are not wildly dissimilar. They're a little dissimilar, but, yeah. but, but I, I know I'm, I'm a flyer as, as we yeah. said, but I, I know the beginning, I know the end and I know generally where i want the characters to be at the end yeah. um and then i'll write to that and then to uh to make sure they don't make stupid decisions in in, in view of the story i'm telling i make sure yeah. they always make good decisions but i make sure they only have the information that makes them make the decision that takes the story where i want it to go see um, that's yeah that's why that's why you're uh, smarter about it than i am <laughs> well smarter would be i'm certainly more pragmatic i guess or at least yeah. uh um a sim- more you know i type i yeah. type a lot so yeah so interesting so so you know, so Jody, what advice would you have? We've talked, we've, this has been a little different than a lot of my interviews. Yeah. Um, but let's say there's a, an aspiring person. Hey, hey, okay. Here's, here's, here's the real question. This is a real question. I didn't prep you for this question. Um, okay. We have, we, let's say, and, and it'll happen. There's an, there's a person who's, who's almost done writing the world's greatest novel for real. No joke. This one's going to be it. How do they know whether they should, should self publish it or whether they should try and get mm. an agent? Oh yeah. You didn't prepare me for this. No, I know. And, um, and I, I can't answer it by the way. Cause I don't know because I waited 30 seconds. I didn't get a reply email. So I hit the self publish button. Yeah. Yeah. So here's, here's what I, here's what I think. Uh, if I'm being completely honest, I think you should self publish. Um, I, I think that your ego in the long run will be served better by doing what will get you in front of the most readers. And the reality of the situation is you just wrote the greatest book in the world. That's a non-contestable part of this question. So right. Um, 
you're going to have to do the hard work of marketing. Nobody's going to discover it, even though it's the greatest book ever, but you have to do the hard work of marketing regardless, regardless of whether you're self or traditionally published. Yep. So my answer is self-published because you're going to do that hard work of marketing. And when it catches fire, you make a hundred times more money. Make and more. Yeah. Then, then the traditional publishers come after you and they're like, hey, we d- we'd like the international rights. And so you get to sell it internationally through your dream publisher and you get to read in panels in Spain and France and everywhere that you wanted to go. You get everything if you self-pub. If you do it the other way around, they own your rights and they've got you by the throat. Look, I, I agree with you completely. The only um, nuance I would add is if you are self-publishing, you, you got to pay for that editor yourself. So you, you got the editor as part of Absolutely. the deal, but okay. you have to, you have to look, I pump out books and I go through my stuff, but I, I have a person uh, who's my, he's been my editor uh, since my second book. And then I had to go back and do my first book because I didn't have an editor and that was a huge mistake. And yeah. she's very good. Um, matter of fact, she's really, really, really good. But, mm-hmm. um, and, and, and I uh, look at what she does. So then the next book I try and Get, get in front of her. And so I, in fact, I just got this book prayer drum back from her this morning. And I was very proud of myself because there was only to your point, there was only something in the margin of maybe every other page as opposed wow. to every single page. Uh, that's amazing. So, yeah. And, and, and as I tell her, I'm always making different mistakes. So at least I keep her on her toes. <laughs> that's um, right. Yeah. And, and um, I actually did a, a little video on uh, the cost of it. And it's about, you know, depending on the length of your book, you're looking at four or 500 bucks um, yeah. and it's worth it though. Because if you're at all serious, you're going to embarrass yourself if you just put it out there without getting a second set of professional eyes on it. Yeah. Um, so if you do that, yeah, I, right. I don't know. I, I can't imagine if I had tried to go through a publisher, I'd only have one book out. Maybe, mm. maybe, yeah. maybe if they pick me up. I mean, I've got, I've got, I've got it's like 25 history books I've written and then uh, like 20 fiction book thrillers you know so yeah. i and uh, and i'm picking up an audience you know whatever but um yeah so right. if you're going to self-publish which i do think is is different and if mm-hmm. anyone that has a stigma to it punch them in the throat because you know yeah. They, they, yeah. you know they're, they're they're living they're living in a different world they're living in the old world completely um, yes so exactly inter- it's interesting well look jody i wish you luck i, I really sincerely do um, Thank you. And as I've told you, I've, I've started listening to your podcasts, which are uh, way better than this thing I'm doing. Um, they, no, they are. They are. It's very, very, very professional. It's a different format. It's a different format. Um, and they're just audio, um, yeah. but they're very, very, very good. So I encourage everyone to uh, take a listen to a couple of your podcasts and, and tell you what, if, if um, your book moves forward, when your book moves forward, yeah. let me know. And then we'll, we'll do another one of these and we'll, we'll see what, what you've learned and, and, and the different other insights you can give the people. That'd be phenomenal. I would love that. And thank you so much. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Uh. Thank you for watching. Please consider hitting the subscribe button.